yet as the sin bearer, that's how he was crucified. He was numbered amongst transgressors. And all that, God was accomplishing his purpose, even though they remained in their ignorance. Until some, it appears, the Lord did open their eyes. And they looked upon him whom they had pierced. But that same work of the Spirit is necessary in our hearts. Because they were just our representatives. When they cried, crucify him, crucify They were speaking in our place. And if I believe and have been taught that Christ died for me, then my sins nailed them to that tree. They're raising their fists in the face of God was doing it on my behalf. But all the while, Christ was taking away my sin. One thing's certain, he came from a long line of sinners. Christ did. And yet he himself, without sin, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, and yet he identified with sinners, even in how he was brought into this world. That's what this story is all about. But you stop and think, too, about why this story is here. This is the beginning of it, and it's leading to that chosen seed, Christ, who should come. But in every case, as you read, so-and-so was born and they died. So-and-so was born and they died. So-and-so was born and they died. And that's why Christ came, that he might indeed, for that people that the Father gave him, work in such a way that death be not unto condemnation, even though that's what we get from Adam, but it be unto eternal life. Now, that's an amazing thing when you stop and think about it. The judgment here that David is inflicting on his enemies was exactly the judgment that they would inflict on people. They would saw people asunder. In fact, in Hebrews, it speaks of those that perished under the saw and uh, under all manner of torture. And so some people, when they read this, they think, well, David would never do this. It's like some think of Christ. Well, he's too good to condemn anybody. No, the picture here is of the absolute condemnation and judgment of those who oppose the king. What is their end? It's a pretty gruesome picture. When it says here that he put them under saws, he, he had them sawed in two because that's what they did to their enemies. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It's a picture of justice here that when he made them to pass through the brick kiln, that means literally to be burnt in brick kilns. If you study a little bit of the history of Ammon, the god of Moloch, that's what they required their children. This is what the Lord said, don't follow their habits. Where for blessing, they would take their firstborn child and actually put them in the fire for blessing in return, pass them through the fire. So the exact same punishment is what we see here David exercising and inflicting on these because of how they dealt with their own enemies. And, and that's really what a picture of, of hell is. You know, people have a, they say, I talk to people and say, I have a hard time getting my mind around hell. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're not one of the Lord's redeemed, you better be prepared for it because it's a place of torment, of judgment, and a fire that will never be kindled. And some may find fault with God because it doesn't fit who their God is. But I will tell you, it's the God of Scripture. 